Well, I, I think they sit side by side. And um, now, my my understanding of our real self, I, I see it, see our real self, true self, authentic self as a circle, and in that in that circle sits at the centre a circle of joy, which I think potentially our natural state. Now I know that's eastern, you know, more eastern than western, and and possibly existentialists would have a different take about you know, what's in the middle. So, but this is my understanding and what, what I've come to. So I think our potential is to live in joy. Something in the environment happens that takes us out of joy into anger, sadness, fear. Um, so say, for example, I experience a loss. I come out of joy. I feel my sadness, perhaps feel some anger about it. Perhaps it feels some fear. How can I go on without this object this or this person or whatever? Feel all my feelings and return to joy. Now, that, that's what I think a healthy emotion processing um, facility is all about. Joy, something happens, feel my feelings. If I'm frightened, I might need to take some support, get a bit more information, resource myself, settle myself, return to joy. Now... If we haven't got permission to feel our feelings, which is an awful lot of us, we, we touch one of those authentic feelings and we fly up into anxiety or we fly down into depression and numb ourselves because that's a no-go area. Um, now, when we touch one of those feelings, we're going to have a shame response. We're not allowed. We're not allowed to be us. That's what the shame's about. So it encircles, the shame encircles the self. And then around around the shame is a rage response. We don't want to feel the shame. Don't want to feel the shame. But we we've nowhere else to go. You know, so then we get the the rage response, which is a hot, fighty, you know, a, aggressive response. To, to, to feeling shamed or feeling shame or that numbing, just numbing out and, and just making a decision, I'm, I'm, I'm not going there again. I'm never going to feel that shame again. Does that make sense? It's, it's like... Um, it does. I can see that circle. I can see the kind of, you know, the natural, yeah. genuine feelings that we kind of have around the circle. Yes. But the, the shame is kind of stops us from having that and it's, it's like it... It's burning or something, and we kind of fly off it, and yeah, it yeah. just stops us. It just stops us from being us. We're not allowed to be us. Mm. It's um, in a way, it's helped to survive in our families of origin because we weren't allowed to feel our feelings. We would have been disapproved of. We would have lost love. We would have been shamed. So we do it for ourselves. You know, we do it for ourselves. So to drop into that place of depression or to have an anxious response allows yeah. us to continue to belong yes. in our families yeah. of origin. Yeah. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. So you've got what I think of as the authentic self, the emotional self. Then you've got the shame and the rage. And then I think we've got a false self around the outside that presents to the world yeah. that, that's adapted, very adapted. So there's a, a zigzag possible, you know, in and out and across all of those regions. That's how I've come to think about. Yeah, thank you, Sue. That's really <laughs> helpful to just think about those circles within circles. And, and yeah. so that often what we're seeing in each other is, is a very different representation than actually what's in the middle, if we were living from that place of joy. and. Yes, yes, absolutely. And... I like I like Johnson's model. He talks about real self, false self around the outside, and a symptomatic self in the middle. And the symptomatic self is all the raw emotional processing that needs to happen to get from the false self to the real self in his model. And um, so the, my model's a little bit inspired by his. And for me, that symptomatic self region is the r rage. The, and the, the shame that needs to be 
processed 